Grace, peace, and love, family, and welcome on back in to the Bread, Wine, and Soul Food Channel, where we deal with nothing but what thus saith the Lord, the Holy Scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, the King James Version of the Bible, and everything that the Father in Jesus Christ has made known and revealed unto us through his Spirit of Truth, also known as the Comforter and the Holy Ghost. So with that being said, all praise, honor, and glory be unto the Almighty God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in Jesus' name. Because truly without him, like Jesus said over here in John 15 and 5, for without me ye can do nothing. And that means absolutely nothing, family. Don't you understand that we don't have no eternal life without Jesus Christ? We can't do nothing. We didn't wake up this morning on our own. So let's open up this Bible study with Psalms 100 in its entirety. And let's pay close attention to what this psalm is saying. It says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that have made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into, the, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and application of his holy word to our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. So once again, welcome on in, family, and peace to everybody that's tuning in now and later. Peace to everybody that's tuning in from all around the world. My family out there in South Africa, uh, my brother Cam out there in Australia, Sister Amanda and Pat Mully Mole over there in the UK. Peace to everybody that's even tuning in over here in the United States and everywhere else you at. Peace to you and blessed Sabbath day. And what we're going to deal with today is a topic that the Lord Jesus Christ sent his Holy Spirit and inspired me to do. And that is the testimony of Jesus Christ. And what we're going to have a look at throughout the course of this Bible study is how the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. And if we hold on to this testimony that we have about Jesus Christ, this is what's going to uh, uh, continue to guide us through this life. Our beliefs is what's going to get us eternal salvation because we have faith in the one who died for our sins, which is none other than Jesus Christ, who was sent by the father to redeem this creation. So to put it in simple terms, we have a creator. That's why I told you to pay attention to this verse three in Psalms 100. We have a creator that created everything. And since he is the father of us all and the fact that he created all of us. And he created all the things we need to pay attention to what he is saying, because what he did was he opened up the door for us to be adopted into his family through belief in the gospel. So this is why we have to hold on to the testimony of Jesus Christ. But I want to show you something else, too. I want to show you something that Peter said before we get into it. As a matter of fact, let's kick it off with this. Let's go over here to Second Peter. Second Peter one. Now, Peter was an eyewitness to Jesus Christ's majesty. As a matter of fact, he was walking around with Jesus. He saw the things that Jesus went through. So I'm more inclined to believe what Peter's testimony is saying about Jesus Christ than somebody else. All right. So let's take a look at this. Somebody that don't even believe in God. All right. Somebody who wasn't there. Jesus Christ actually talked with Peter. So let's take a look and see what he said. Second Peter one. And we're going to get into this. Second Peter one and verse 16, it says, for we have not followed cunningly devised fables. So Peter said, we're not following no made up stories and fables and fairy tales. This is the real deal is what Peter is saying. He said, when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. So they actually saw the one who was writing all of the words in the pages of this book. They actually saw the savior. So how can we say that this is not true? They actually saw him and this is documented. All right. And a lot of the things that Jesus Christ pronounced, they've been fulfilled. And a lot of it has not been fulfilled yet. 
The very fact that we still here waiting for prophecy to be fulfilled, that goes to show you that Jesus Christ is still is true. Some of the things that he still that even said is still we still waiting for it to come to pass. Let's go and take a look at something, though. Let's go back over here because the Lord, he chose our people, the nation of Israel to be a witness to the rest of the nations. He chose us to be a witness. So if you got a witness against something, that means you got a testimony about something. In What could that be? Let's find out. Isaiah 43 and verse eight. He says, bring forth the blind people that have eyes and the deaf that have ears. Talking about Israel. Wherein they see and they see not and hear and they hear not. They don't believe God. They rejected God. This is why the world is in a state of condition it is today. Because God chose our people to share his word with everybody else. And to get right with God. All of this murder and death and everything that's going on in the, in the world. This stuff wouldn't be happening if our people would have did what they were supposed to do. But we're going to take a look at it. It says, let all the nations be gathered together. And let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this and show us former things? What nation can show us former things? Things concerning God. What other nation can show us about or what other nation can uh, uh, say that they spoke with God directly? No other nation, only the children of Israel, which is our people. And if you got a problem with who our people are, take that up with God. And if you want to identify who our people are, look and see who the people were that got scattered out of their land all across the world on slave ships. Go back and read Deuteronomy 28 when you get a chance. You'll find out who the children of Israel are. You'll see the ones who are uh, on the bottom of everything, the ones that's suffering, the ones that built up the whole world and don't get no credit for it. You will find out who they are. He says, let all the nations be gathered together and let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this and show us former things? Let them bring forth their witnesses that they may be justified or let them hear and say it is true. So in other words, God is saying, go and grab all of the nations and find out whether or not they can tell you the same things that I'm telling you. Can they declare to you how the world was formed? That was revealed to Moses, which was an Israelite. Okay, they can't do this. It says, ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, because our people entered into a covenant with the Lord, starting with Abraham. We entered into a covenant with the Lord, always promising to do his will, to be obedient unto him, and he was going to be our God. Okay, so we, our people are witnesses to this. It says that ye may know and believe me. See, that's the whole thing. God has chosen a people for himself to declare his works and his majesty among the rest of the nations. But we, we dropped the ball. We didn't do what we were supposed to do. It says, and understand that I am he. Before me, there was no God formed. Neither shall there be after me. So God said, I wasn't dealing with no strange God. You saw me. I'm the true and living God. It says, I, even I am the Lord and beside me, there is no savior. Well, who is the savior? That's none other than Jesus Christ. That's what his name means. He will save his people. He is salvation. Okay, let's go and take a look at something else. Let's go and find out why this people, why we in the condition that we in, because there's a testimony for this. And all of this is going to make sense in one minute if it's not making sense yet. Let's take a look at this. Jeremiah 22. Jeremiah 22. And let's take a look and see what God told Jeremiah to go and tell the kings of Judah. It says, thus saith the Lord, go down to the house of the king of Judah and speak there this word and say, hear the word of the Lord, O king of Judah, that sittest upon the throne of David. Thou and thy servants and thy people that enter in by these gates. So God sent Jeremiah to the king to tell him about what God is telling them. He's prophesying to the king now. He says, thus saith the Lord, execute ye judgment and righteousness and deliver the spoiled out of the hand of the oppressor 
and do no wrong. Do no violence to the stranger. So it wasn't supposed to be no racism going on in the kingdom. But this is what was happening back then. And now our people are feeling the effects of what we did to the stranger back then. We feeling that. Because, look, quite frankly, nobody really likes black people. We get treated, we mistreated, we, we get the short end of the stick of everything. But I'm pointing all of this to show you, I'm pointing all of this out because we did it to them back then and now God is giving us a chance to feel what we did to them. It's unfortunate, but hey, this is the word of God. It says, do no violence to the stranger, the fatherless, nor the widow, neither shed innocent blood in this place. For if ye do this thing indeed, then shall there enter in by the gates of this house king sitting upon the throne of David, riding in chariots and in horses, he and his servants and his people. So God is telling Jeremiah to go and tell the king, listen, if you keep these commandments, if you do the right thing, according to what thus saith the Lord, it's always going to be a king sitting on the throne. Because our people disobeyed this, we got scattered all around the world. Somebody else is in our land that's perpetrating a fraud, talking about they the children. They calling themselves Israeli, not Israelites, Israelis, which is occupiers. They counterfeit. They stole our identity. Just like off of uh, CB4, when Chris Rock, he was acting like he was MC Gusto. That's what these people are doing. They acting like they us. It says, but if ye will not hear these words, I swear by myself, saith the Lord, that this house shall become a desolation. And guess what, family? This house is still a desolation to this very day. Because our people rebelled against God. Now, this is a testimony. Let's go and take a look at this. Verse eight. Let's skip down. It says, and many nations shall pass by this city. And they shall say every man to his neighbor. Wherefore hath the Lord done thus unto this great city? Like why did the Lord do these people like that? Let's find out why. Then they shall answer. Because they have forsaken the covenant of the Lord their God. And worshipped other gods and served them. This is why we go through what we go through. Because we entered into a covenant with the Lord our God. And we forsook it. We made a breach of contract. If we make a vow to the Lord, we can't we can't slack to pay it. We got to pay it. And to this very day, this covenant is standing, people. This is why if you hear the word of God, you have to be obedient. You have to do what he says. Otherwise, you're going to suffer the wrath of his. <laughs> of what he going to pour out on you? And we don't want that. OK, so let's take a look at this now. Let's look at uh something in Amos, the third chapter. So you want to know why Israel suffered the way that they do? It's because our people went contrary to the word. They had the testimony and they rejected the testimony. This is why our people are in the condition that they in. Let's take a look at this. Look at what God said about Israel. The ones that got the testimony of the Lord. It says, hear this word that the Lord have spoken against you, O children of Israel. Against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. So this is why we go through what we go through, family. Because God said, I spoke with you directly. I told you, I gave you all my laws, statutes, and commandments. And you were supposed to share this with the rest of the world, and you didn't do that. That's why we get punished more so than anybody else the caucasian man he can get less he can get a slap on the wrist when he going to court the black man psh, man they're gonna give him they're gonna try to throw that man under the jail depending on what it is he did but the inequality in all of this this is happening in our community and among our nation because our people disobey and broke the covenant of God. This is why this is all happening, family. A people that had the testimony of God. They saw God come down on the mountain 
and give those Ten Commandments to Moses. And yet and still, they rebelled against that. So anyway, I just want to show you something else. Let's go over here and look at this. Revelations 1. So it's our job individually to work out our own salvation and to believe what this Bible is saying about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and his Father. So let's take a look at this. Revelations 1, and let's read verses 1 through 3. It says, The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his, an by his angel unto his servant, John. So the father revealed something to Jesus. Jesus sent the angel and revealed it to his servant, John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. So he's letting you know what he saw, what he's witnessing. This is why we have this book, family. Let's see. Let's see how we are tied into all of this. Let's see. He says, blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand because God got a time when he going to judge everybody. As a matter of fact, we being judged right now based off our behavior and what we believe in. We are being judged family. But he said, blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy. So you bless when you read it and you hear it and you keep it. You are blessed no matter who you are. White, black, brown, it don't matter. No matter who you are. How do I know this? Let me go and show you something. Let me show you how Paul, which was an Israelite, he was preaching to some Gentiles. Let's go and see what he told these Gentiles over here in Ephesians. Let's look at Ephesians 1. Because this is who this epistle was addressed to. So let's go and take a look. Somebody who was not Israel. Ephesians 1. Let's take a look at verse 3. Ephesians 1 and 3. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. He blessed us through the sacrifice that he made for us, family. Because if we believe his word and we do what he say, and we got the Holy Spirit dwelling within us. After this life is over, the same way Jesus Christ resurrected from the grave, we will resurrect too because we have his spirit dwelling in us. Because we were living by the testimony that Jesus Christ left for us, family. He says, according as he have chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Don't you know God already knew who every last one of us was before we even got here? Before we were formed, he already knew who we were. He said he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So we supposed to walk like our father walked. He says, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. So God is adopting us. So to make a long story, story short and to simplify the gospel, what Jesus Christ did was he warned us about the, 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 the wickedness and the evilness in the world because there was a war in heaven. Satan, the devil got kicked out of heaven and now he's roaming around on this earth, walking about seeking who he can devour. So what Jesus did, he placed or created man in the Garden of Eden. He created Adam and eventually he brought Adam's rear about. And so what happened was he gave Adam some instructions not to eat of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Don't touch it lest you die. His wife was used to get at him or to do Satan's business. And now what happened is the world is in a fallen state because Adam refused to rebuke his wife and she listened to Satan. So what we needed was a redeemer to redeem us from the curse of this earth, to redeem us from death. And that redeemer is none other than Jesus Christ. So if we apply what he is telling us out of this word, we can avoid all of the traps and pitfalls that Satan has set for us. And we could even avoid 
being tossed in a lake of fire because we are holding on to the testimony of Jesus Christ because he was sent to die for us. So our father, our father is giving us instructions on how to live, how to be in perfect harmony with him. Okay. He's adopting us through his word because everybody is subscribing to something. Either you're going to listen to God or you're going to listen to Satan. You ain't gonna, it ain't going to be no in-between because if you lukewarm, God will reject you as well. So let's take a look at this. It says, to the praise of his glory or to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he have made us accepted in the beloved. So we don't have any righteousness on our own. Our righteousness comes from Jesus Christ. We don't have this on our own. It says, in whom we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. If Jesus Christ didn't come and die for us, family, every last one of us human beings will be headed to the lake of fire. But Jesus Christ, he redeemed us from that. Our father is warning us about spiritual things that's happening in this world. And he's telling us how to live in this physical life, family, by living a spiritual life, by holding on to his testimony. All right. So once again, let's skip over here. Let's take a look at, uh, let's look at verse 15. Let's see what Paul said. He said, wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. So he's saying, I'm praying that the Lord reveal himself to you, to you all. He says, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. So Paul is saying, I'm praying that your eyes are open to these spiritual things that God has shared with him. And that we may know the hope of his calling. Do you know the hope of his calling? That's for us to believe in his son and so that we can have eternal salvation after the Lord come back and redeem those of his who belong to him. He says, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe? According to the working of his mighty power, which he have wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. So Paul is saying, I'm praying that you get eternal salvation through the testimony that you have, because if God is revealing something to us. We are blessed when he revealing the testimony of his son, Jesus Christ. To us. Do you know how great that is? You were chosen by God to get eternal salvation based off of what you believe and the testimony that you have. OK, let's continue. And this testimony is none other than Jesus Christ came and died for our sins. Let's go and take a look at this. Let's go and see something else. Let's go and take a look at John three. And let's go back and take a look at how Jesus was having this dialogue with Nicodemus. And he was telling Nicodemus that, you know, in order to enter into the kingdom of heaven, you got to be born again. But let's have a look at this. We're going to start at verse 12. So Jesus told Nicodemus, he said, if I have told you earthly things and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? So when you talking to a person and they can't understand the, the basic physical things. How can you speak to them about spiritual things? They're not going to understand because they don't have the spirit of Christ to interpret what's being said. It says, and no man have ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the son of man, which is in heaven. So ain't nobody in heaven, but the father and the angels family. Ain't nobody uh, floating off to heaven when they die. It says, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up. Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness over in Numbers 21. When them people had committed fornication and uh, them snakes was, uh, them fiery serpents was biting 
the children of Israel. And what Moses did was put a, a, a brazen serpent upon a pole, which is the medical symbol today. And whoever looked on it will be saved. So just like whoever believes in a sacrifice that Jesus Christ made for us human beings, you will be saved because we cannot be saved on our own. We can't. We need Jesus Christ to save us. We don't have no righteousness of our own family. It's only through Jesus Christ. It says that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have ever eternal life. So when we believe in Jesus Christ, we will not perish, but have eternal life. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So if we believe in Jesus Christ and we believe in a testimony about him, we can get eternal life, family. God loved us that much. So don't ever let Satan make you feel like you ain't nothing in God's sight. God, he decided to die for us. That ain't nothing to sneeze at. He decided to give up his life so that we can get eternal salvation. Through believing on his son and what he did for us. It says, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Because this world is in a fallen state, family, and the only way to come up out of this is to believe on Jesus Christ. Don't operate the same way the world is operating. It says, he that believeth on him is not condemned. So when you believe in Jesus Christ, you're not condemned. Although Satan would make you feel like you condemned because you made a mistake, you messed up, you fell short. No, ain't no condemnation to the one that's in Christ Jesus. Satan is condemned. He was in heaven. He saw the operation of God and he still rebelled against him. Wow. Are you out of your mind to blatantly rebel against God? How could you do something like that? Once again, it says, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he have not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. So you don't believe the testimony about Jesus Christ. This is how you get condemned. It says, and this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. See, sin, to somebody who doesn't know Jesus Christ, sin feels good to that person. Satan will trick you and make you think that you okay. Oh, man, you just having fun. Don't you want to go and do that again? No, you don't want to continue on in sin because if you do, God will step in and show you your, the error of your ways. And if you continue on, the consequences will be fatal. I got to tell y'all the truth. I'm not going to sugarcoat nothing to you. He says, for everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. So if you continue on, and your evil, you continue to make a career out of sinning and you perpetuating behavior that's against God. Let's see what he said. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. So you know what's right, but you want to reject that. You, you, you destroying or you denying the testimony of jesus christ the lord came to redeem us from our sins not for us to continue on in them he wants to us to learn about him to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling to keep ourselves unspotted from the world he says but he that doeth truth cometh to the light so the ones that's operating in the truth you're gonna come to jesus christ it says that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in god so you want you always want God's leadership, his direction, his counsel, his wisdom. You want that. All right. Once again, let's continue on with this. First John 15. Let's go and look at the testimony again. Let's go and take a look at this. First John 5. I'm sorry. I don't know why I said 15. First John 5. First John 5. There ain't no first John 15. First John 5 and verse 1. Let's take a look and see about the people who have a testimony in Jesus Christ. And whoever believes in him, whoever believes this testimony about Jesus Christ, you are not condemned. 
And especially when we applying this to our lives, because God told us to do something too, family. So let's take a look. It says, whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him, that begot loveth him also that is begotten of him. So if you love Jesus Christ, you love his father as well. It says, but by this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. So we know that we love each other and that we love God when we obey God and keep his commandments, family. It says, for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. Ain't nothing wrong with keeping God's commandments. As a matter of fact, the scriptures told us over there in Deuteronomy 11 and 21 that if we would have kept God's commandments, it would have been as the days of heaven upon earth. So once again, his commandments are not grievous. You just have people that want to rebel against God. It says, for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. So you have a testimony about Jesus Christ. Our faith, our faith is based off of what we believe. Remember, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So how much of this Bible do you believe? This is how we're going to overcome this world through the testimony that we have in Christ Jesus, knowing that he triumphed over Satan and his dark kingdom. He made an open show of them when he resurrected from out of the grave. Verse five, it says, who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the son of God. So the only way you're going to overcome this world is if you have the testimony of Christ Jesus. Ain't no other way around this family. This is why it's so important to believe him. It says, this is he that came by water and blood. So you see his tools of purification. He came by water and blood. Even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. So you got to be washed with the water of God, which is the word. How you do that? Go and repent and get baptized in the name of Jesus and some water. The blood is what purifies us from our sins because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins like it talks about over there in Hebrews 9 and verse 22. I just want to flash that on the screen. All right. So once again, Jesus Christ shed his blood for us so that we can be made heirs of salvation as well. So he said, and it is the spirit that beareth witness because the spirit is truth. And the spirit is bearing witness to these things because the spirit is truth. And remember, Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. We have the testimony of Jesus Christ written in the pages of this Bible family. This is why we do well if we believe it. Verse seven, it says, for there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. They are operating on the same accord. They all bearing witness to the same thing. The Spirit is bearing witness to the Word, which is Jesus Christ, and the Father. And the Father is bearing witness to the Word and the Holy Spirit. All right? It says, and there are three that bear witness in the earth. The Spirit and the water and the blood and these three agree in one once again these were the tools of god's purification this is what he used to clean mankind up with the spirit the water and the blood and they all agree on one accord it says if we receive the witness of men the witness of god is greater for this is the witness of god which he have testified of his son so once again you can receive, you can hear about what a man is saying about God, but the father already put his stamp of approval on this witness about him, uh, uh, his son. Let's take a look. Verse 10. He that believeth on the son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God have made him a liar because he believeth not the record that God gave of his son. Wait a second. So you making a liar out of God. That's dangerous. So in essence, what you're doing is you blaspheming. If you calling God a liar, that's blasphemy. It says, and this is the record that God have given unto 
And this is the record that God have given to us eternal life. And this life is in his son. He's bearing witness that Jesus Christ came and made the sacrifice for us, family. He's given us eternal life. He that hath the son hath life. And he that hath not the son of God hath not life. So if you don't have Jesus Christ, you don't have no life, family. So for those of you who reject Jesus Christ, you walking around feeling down and out and depressed and wanting to kill yourself because you are not connected to the one who created you. You are not connected to your redeemer. This is why you feel the way that you feel. So how about having a change in mind and start listening to what thus said the Lord? Matter of fact, I challenge you to, to, to start living by God's word day by day. Try it for a month. And if you don't if you don't see no results within that month, you can call me a liar. I shut this YouTube channel down. I never preach about God ever again. If you don't see no results. I guarantee you, if you let God come into your uh, uh, heart and guide your life, I guarantee you going to start seeing stuff change around because of the testimony that you have. I put my life on that. It says, and this is the record that God have given to us eternal life. And this life is in his son. He that hath the son hath life. And he that hath not the son of God hath not life. So you don't have no life if you don't have Jesus Christ, family. He says, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the son of God. That ye may know that ye have eternal life. And that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. So he said, I'm writing these things unto you so that you can believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. This is why when we pray and we ask God for things, we need to always pray and ask, Lord, let this prayer be according to your will so that we can receive what we ask him for. And that boosts up our confidence when we getting things from God. It says, and if we know that he hear us whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. We know we're going to get what we asking for, family. You can't go wrong with that. You cannot go wrong. Let's continue with this because somebody else had a testimony about God. Let's go back to uh, Genesis. Genesis 14. And uh, like that blood. It's a witness, just like a, a, at a crime scene. My sister uh, was pointing that out to me at one point, you know, letting me know that, hey, man, just like on a crime scene, you know, uh, uh, it's bearing witness too. that DNA be on somebody's uh, clothes or whatever is bearing witness to the fact that they blood is on you. And it's the same thing with Jesus Christ. But anyway, let's take a look at this. Genesis 14. His, his blood is bearing witness to the fact that we got eternal salvation coming, family. But anyway, let's take a look at this. Genesis 14, and let's take a look at verse 17. And we're going to see what happened after uh, Abraham got done with this war. Let's see who came out and met him. And it was none other than Melchizedek, which is uh, Jesus Christ uh, before he was known as Jesus Christ. But anyway, let's continue. We're going we gonna to pay attention to this. It says, And the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of Kedar and of the kings that were with him at the valley of Shaveh, which is the king's dale. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine. Who else came bringing forth bread and wine? And this name Melchizedek means king of righteousness. He was a king and a high priest, just like Jesus is a king and a high priest. He got the same tools. He was without beginning the days. This is none other than Jesus Christ, known as Melchizedek back here. But anyway, it says in Melchizedek, king of Salem. What? Wait a minute. King of Salem. That's peace. That's what Jerusalem is. Jeru city. Salem of peace, city of peace. So he was the king over here. Always been king over Jerusalem. It says brought forth bread and wine. Jesus brought forth bread and wine. He said his body and his blood was bread and wine. He said, and he was the priest of the most high God. Well, who's the priest of the most high God now? None other than Jesus. 
the one that's sitting on the right hand of the Father, making intercession for our sins, as well as waiting for his enemies to be made a footstool. It says, and he blessed them and said, blessed be Abram of the most high God, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be the most high God, which have delivered thine enemies into thine hand, and he gave them tithes of all. So Abraham paid tithes to this Melchizedek. Who do we pay tithes to nowadays? Ain't it Jesus Christ? It's the same thing, but I want to show you something. See, Abraham or Abram at this time, he didn't know God as Lord and Savior. He knew him as king and high priest. As a matter of fact, let's let the scriptures tell us. Exodus 6. So even he has a testimony about God that can't never be changed. Let's take a look at this. Our forefather Abraham had a testimony about God. So it says, then the Lord said unto Moses, now shalt thou see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand shall he let them go. And with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. Because the Lord sent Moses to go and tell Pharaoh, let his people go. Which was the children of Israel. Because they was in bondage to the Egyptians at this time. And the Lord sent Moses to deliver the children of Israel out of the hand of Egypt. So it says, and God spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord. And I appeared unto Abram, Abraham, unto Isaac and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty. But by my name, Jehovah, was I not known to them. So do you see what's happening here, family? God said, I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac and to Jacob by the name of God Almighty. So he's revealing himself to them by the name of God Almighty. They didn't know God as Jehovah. Okay. So once again, we know God as Jesus, the Christ and his father, which his father's name is Jesus as well. Cause he said he came in his father's name. So anyway, you got people that are pervert the doctrine, but anyway, we ain't, we, we going to stick with the scriptures with what the scriptures are saying. He says, and I have also established my covenant with them. Because God don't forget covenants, family. He says to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage, wherein they were strangers. So the Lord said, I, I promised that land to you all. This is exactly why when the Lord come back and gather up the children of Israel, they're going to go in that wilderness. They're going to get purged out. The rebels going to get purged out in that wilderness. The ones that got a problem with God's word and the rest of them, they're going to enter into the land of Canaan, which was promised to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, because that's part of the covenant. We got a land that we belong, that we going back to family that belongs to us. Verse five, it says, and I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians keep in bondage. And I have remembered my covenant. That's one thing about God. He do not forget covenants and he will not break his covenant. All right. So now let's go and take a look at this. Now, let's go over here and look at something in Second Chronicles six. Second Chronicles six. And let's see what King Solomon prayed for us, because this prayer is still good, even to this very day, family. Let's take a look at this. Second Chronicles six and verse 24, it says, and if thy people Israel be put to the worst before the enemy, because they have sinned against thee and shall return and confess thy name and pray and make supplication before thee in this house. So if we getting smashed before the enemy, things ain't going well. Because we sin, but we have a change of heart. Now we start repenting and confessing our sins. What God say he going to do? He says, then hear thou from heavens and forget and forgive the sin of thy people Israel and bring them again unto the land which thou gavest to them and to their fathers. So he said, remember the covenant after we acknowledge our sin. Let's skip down to verse 36. This is the testimony that we have about God, family. Those of us who struggling right now, who suffering with things, we have a testimony about Jesus Christ. We know that he will deliver. He can and he is able to deliver. So let's continue. It says, if they sin against thee, for there is no man which sinneth not, and thou be angry with them and deliver them over before their enemies, and they carry them away captives unto a land far off or near. Well, we in the land of our captives far off from our land. 
very far. He says, yet if they bethink themselves in the land, whether they are carried captive and turn and pray unto thee in the land of their captivity, saying, we have sinned, we have done amiss and have dealt wickedly. So you repent it. We sitting over here, those of us that's over here in America, be sitting over here, man, going through it. But we didn't have a change in heart, a change of heart, and we repented and asking the Lord to have mercy upon us now. Because this captivity ain't no joke, family. It says, if they return to thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their captivity, whether they have carried them captives and pray toward their land. This is why we pray toward the east, because that's where our land is. So we're not praying toward the sun. We're praying toward wherever our land is at. So wherever you scattered around the world at, pray toward the land, which is Jerusalem, where the Lord had the temple set up at and where he will have his temple set up again. at. It says, whether they have carried them captives and pray toward their land, which thou gavest unto their fathers and toward the city, which thou hast chosen and toward the house, which I have built for thy name. Then hear thou from the heavens, even from thy dwelling place. And their prayer and their supplications and maintain their cause and forgive thy people which have sinned against thee. Do you see this prayer that Solomon made for us and not just for us, even for the stranger as well? So once again, this is a testimony that we have about Jesus Christ because we are in captivity. How many times have I back been up against the wall? We going through all kind of pain and trouble and all, all kind of stuff. But then we have a change in heart. We like, Lord, can you please help me? I need you to deliver us, please, because we going through it. Don't he turn around and do it. Don't he alleviate our trouble. God is awesome, family. That's why we got to hold on to this testimony that we have about Jesus Christ. Let's continue. He says, now, my God, let I beseech thee, thine eyes be open and let thine ears be attent unto the prayer that is made in this place. He said, Lord, listen to this prayer when we pray it. This prayer still applies to this very day, family, even in 2024. It says, now, therefore, arise, O Lord, God, into thy resting place. Thou in the ark of thy strength. Let thy priests, O Lord God, be clothed with salvation and let thy saints rejoice in goodness. O Lord God, turn not away the face of thine anointed. Remember the mercies of David, thy servant. So he said, remember the covenant you made with King David, my father. And God remembers covenants, family. As a matter of fact, let me let me share something with you. Let's go over here to uh, Ezekiel. Ezekiel 11. Ezekiel 11. And let's take a look at verse 16. Ezekiel 11 and verse 16. Now we're going to take a look. Now this is Ezekiel. Look at what he said. Concerning our captivity, because we are in captivity, family, just in case you don't know. The majority of our people is locked up behind bars. And those of us that's so-called free, we don't make no laws. Don't nobody really care about it. You got these immigrants in our city that's coming in and getting way more benefits than we are. Like, come on, what's going on, man? The Lord said this was going to happen, though. The stranger that's a that's within you gonna get up above you very high and you gonna come down very low. Is this not what's happening in our neighborhoods, in our communities, among our nation? But let's take a look and see how we can alleviate this curse that we up under. It's all with the testimony of Jesus Christ, family. Ezekiel eleven and sixteen. It says, Therefore say, Thus saith the Lord God, although I have cast them far off among the heathen. And although I have scattered them among the countries, yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. Because you're going to remember, man, Lord, I, I'm going through all of this pain and tribulation because our people went contrary to you. And even we went contrary per personally. We have went contrary to the Lord. But the Lord said, if we humble ourselves and turn back and repent, he'll be a little sanctuary unto us. So let's start wrapping this up. Let's see what the testimony that King David had about God. Let's go and take a look at this. Psalm 71. Because everybody in this Bible got a testimony about God. Let's go and take a look at this. Psalm 71. And let's have a look at verse 15. What did King David say? 
He said, my mouth shall show forth thy righteousness and thy salvation all the day. For I know not the numbers thereof. So he said, for as long as I'm alive, I'm going to speak about the righteousness and the goodness of the Lord. He says, I will go in the strength of the Lord God. I will make mention of thy righteousness, even of thine only. He said, I'm going to make mention of God, not his righteousness, because our righteousness is as filthy rags. We need Jesus Christ to make us make us righteous. He's our righteousness. He says, oh, God, thou hast taught me from my youth. So King David been working with God since he was a child. He says, and hitherto have I declared thy wondrous works. How you going to declare somebody's wondrous works if you ain't never seen nothing that the man did? Obviously, he has a testimony about what God has did for him or what he has done. He says, now also, when I am old and gray headed, oh, God, forsake me not. So even when I get old, he said, Lord, don't forsake me. Until I have showed thy strength unto this generation. And thy power to everyone that is to come. He said, Lord, don't forsake me. Let me let me share this word with everybody. I don't know how many days I got left, but let me show forth your righteousness. He says, thy righteousness also, O God, is very high. Who has done great things. O God, who is like unto thee? Even some of us, family, we can't lie. You know doggone well God then showed us great and wonderful things. Marvelous things. This is a testimony. He says, thou, which has showed me great and sore troubles. God will, he said his hands wound and they heal. That's what God do. He said, you showed me great and sore troubles. Shall quicken me again and shall bring me up again from the depths of the earth. He said, man, I done been through some pain and some trouble. But guess what, family? All of this pain and this trouble that we experiencing. It's only bringing us closer to God. That's what's going on. We drawing closer to the Lord. All right. So once again, let's go and take a look at this because we're going to start wrapping this up. Revelations 19. Revelations 19. And let's take a look at verse. Let's see when we get there. Revelations 19 and verse. Uh, let's see. Let's see when Jesus. Or when uh, John, I'm sorry, when John was getting ready to worship this angel. When he saw the church, matter of fact, let's read it. We're going to read this. He saw the church clothed in righteousness. Revelations 19 and 6, is this, it says, and I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude and as the voice of many waters. So it was deep. And as the voice of mighty thunderings, it was deep and loud. Saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the lamb is come and his wife have made herself ready. So remember over there in uh, what was that? Matthew 22. About the marriage supper of the lamb. The Lord had bid his servants to come, but they wouldn't come. Then he told the servant, man, go out and get as many as you can. The Gentiles came, all of the nations came. So whoever come up under the blood of Jesus and holds the testimony of Jesus Christ, you're going to be here. You're going to be here at this at this wedding. Let's see what he said. He says, and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. Well, who is our righteousness? Jesus Christ is our righteousness. He's the one that makes us righteous, family. Just in case you don't know, let me just show you back over here in Jeremiah 20. What is it? Jeremiah 23. Jeremiah 23 and uh, verse 6. It says, In his days Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. So the Lord is our righteousness, family. Jesus Christ, make no mistake about it. Going back to Revelations 19 and verse 9. It says, and he saith unto me, right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, these are the true sayings of God. So this is a true statement. When you called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb, that means you got eternal life coming. If you don't cast away that invitation. He says, and I fell at his feet to worship him. 
And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus, worship God. Wait a second. So this angel even said that they got the testimony of Jesus. He got the testimony of Jesus. And that's what they used to overcome uh, uh, the wicked one, Satan. They had the testimony of Jesus. I just want to flip back and show you this. What was that? Revelations 12. Revelations 12. And uh, where is it? Where was it? It's somewhere over here. There you go. Verse 11, it says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. That's what the angels did. They overcame Satan, the devil, by the testimony of Jesus Christ. We got to know what we believe. We got to believe this family. Know what we read is to be true. So now going back to Revelations 19, once again, y'all getting the extended version today. Because the spirit is pouring it out on me and I can't quench the spirit. Whatever he's telling me to do, that's what I got to do. So anyway, let's continue. He says, and I fit, this is Revelations 19 and 10. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, see thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Wait a second. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, family. That's the spirit of prophecy, having his testimony. Let's go and take a look at something else. One last place. Let's go and look at Acts 10. This is when Peter was sent to go and speak to uh, Cornelius, right? So let's have a look at this. Let's take a look and see what happened. So you all can go back and read this on your own. Because there was an angel that came to Cornelius about uh, uh, about three o'clock, because that's the hour of prayer. It said the ninth hour. But uh, uh, I want to show you what happened when Peter and Cornelius met. Take a look at this. Let's take a look at verses twenty-four through forty uh, through twenty-six. Let's read this. It says, "In the morrow after they entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them." And had called together his kinsmen and their friends. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter took him up, saying, stand up, I myself also am a man. Wait a second. So Cornelius was trying to worship Peter and Peter man, took him up just like the angel did with John. You see the similarities there? We don't get off into worshiping angels and men. We worship God. That's all it is to it. Let's skip down to verse 34 now. It says, Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. God ain't no respecter of persons. Why you got people out here talking about Gentiles can't get salvation? Man, you are out of your mind. You are contradicting what thus said the Lord. You adding leaven into the scriptures. It says, then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respect of persons. But every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. So whatever nation got the testimony of Jesus Christ is accepted with him, family. It says the word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That word I say, ye know, which was published throughout all Judea. So it started at Judea. And began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached or it started at Galilee. It said then it was published throughout all Judea. It says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with them. See, Jesus was healing everybody that was uh, had the, all of these diseases and ailments, had mental issues. Because he had God with him. It says, and we are witnesses of all these things, or we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of Jews, of the Jews, and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly. This here is a testimony that they have about Jesus Christ's family. 
And this is the same exact testimony that we need to hold on to, although we were not there physically to witness this. We have witnesses that were there. Okay, so this is why we have to believe this. Because this right here that's written in the Bible, this is giving us information on how to live an eternal life, family. It's connecting us back to God. It says, not to all the people, but unto the witnesses chosen before God, even to us, who did eat and drink with him after he arose from the dead. So he said he showed, uh, uh, Jesus appeared to uh, the disciples after he resurrected from the grave. It says, and he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which ordained of God or he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and dead. See, so family, after this life is over, we're going to be judged. So we need to make sure that we holding on to the testimony of Jesus Christ and actually walking in what he told us to do and applying it, because if we don't, we're not going to have a favorable judgment when we stand before God. He says to him, give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. And once again, family, that is the testimony of Jesus Christ, which we all need to be holding on to. No matter what color you are, no matter what you done done. It ain't never too late to repent and turn back to Jesus Christ because he ain't willing that none should perish, family. All right. So with that being said, let's continue on with the mission statement of the channel, which is to turn the hearts of the people back to God. So let's go ahead and take a look at this right here. We like to always conclude these Bible studies with scriptures that encourage us to repent. So it says, he that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. So that's exactly what we need to be working on, family, day by day, acknowledging our sins, examining ourselves and confessing our faults to the Lord Jesus Christ and asking him for repentance. So let's take that opportunity to do that right now. So, Heavenly Father, we humbly call upon you in the almighty name of Jesus, asking you, Father God, to forgive us of our sins and create within us a heart that's going to serve you perfectly according to your will all of the days of our life. So that we can be found worthy of your salvation when you appear in your kingdom. We are praying this on behalf of the body of Christ, which is composed of the nation of Israel as well as a stranger. And we asking for you, Lord God, to please look down and have mercy upon us. Accept our prayer, Lord, according to your great name's sake and answer us, Father. So, Lord, we asking for prayers on behalf of the fatherless, the widows, the less fortunate, the wrongfully imprisoned. The ones that sick and afflicted among us, may you please, Lord, send your word and help us and heal us in the almighty name of Jesus. And just to name a few of the people that's afflicted and sick among us, we want to keep our, our, our sister Shantae in our prayers, our sister Rhody, my pops, my nephew Charles, our sister Oprah. We want to keep our sister Stephanie and her family in our prayers on the loss of her mom, the God family. Brother Vince, Sister Sherelle, Sister Lily, Sister Tammy, Sister Gracie, our brother and sister Tom and Amanda out there in the UK, our brother Solomon, our brother Kevon, our brother and sister Chris and Sharon, our sister Tina B, as well as everybody else that's a part of the body of Christ, although you weren't named by name, we praying for us all in the almighty name of Jesus. So with that being said, family, I pray that you all enjoy the rest of the Sabbath day. I love you all so much. May the spirit of God rest upon each and every one of us. And Lord willing, we'll be back tomorrow with another topic out of the Holy Scriptures. Until then, peace in Jesus name.